All right. So, it's a little windy, guys. Sorry about this. Uh, you guys might not be able to hear everything I say, but hopefully the microphone doesn't get too riled up by the wind. We're on, we're on the, another walk, same place. I usually walk in here every week or every, like twice a week or so. But lately, it's been kind of shitty weather. Today's kind of shitty. Yesterday was really nice, though. Uh, yesterday, I should have taken them out. It's a lot warmer. What is this really windy today? Uh, kind of chilly. It's not that. It's not that cold, but. Uh, but yeah. So how have you guys been? I figure I'd give you guys another update video. Or oh man, he's taking a shit. You guys like watching any take a shit? I gotta pick that up. As a matter of fact, I won't do that right now. Where's my bag? So I guess I guess it's a good time to show you guys my backpack. I usually have this backpack. It's a pretty expensive backpack, <laughs> but um, it's got an everything I need in it, and it fits everything pretty well. I'm trying to find the crease line here. There it is. But yeah, so this is really hard to do one-handed. But ah, there we go. It's extremely windy, so I don't want to let this thing go. Alright, sorry about that, guys. Oh. So it's kind of funny, because, uh... I don't think there's a trash can around here. Uh, so I'll just hold on to this shit, I guess. Oh yeah, I think there might be one. Oh, there's one behind me. Okay, so we'll go back, backtrack a little bit. Try to angle the camera up a little bit higher. Uh, I'm trying to learn my lessons from the last video. It's kind of hard because I'm trying to get my hand in front of the. Uh, and it's also really windy, so I'm trying not to drop my phone. <laughs> as you guys can probably hear the wind. So I'm trying to talk as close as I can to the uh, microphone without being loud. Uh, this is a pain. I don't know how directors and and all that, and like film crews record audio and video outside under unideal uh, circumstances. You know, I was actually interested in going to film school, but I decided that I don't want to hate myself that much <laughs> and, uh, you know, become, or at least study for physical therapy. Uh, I don't regret it though. Um, PT was my passion, still is, but, uh, in a little bit different perspective, I'm kind of skeptical now, because of how shitty people can be. <laughs> Come here, buddy. Hey. He likes smelling flowers, and he's smelling, smelling dandelions right now over there, if you guys can see him. Come on, bud. Let's go. Come on. And that is how he runs to me every time I call for him. <laughs> Uh, hopefully that was worth watching. You know, just that moment of me picking up dog shit and ranting. But <laughs> Anyways, I, I, I thought it'd be a good idea to ask you guys in the comment section, like, what I should discuss. I was thinking about doing, like, a weekly discussion. <sighs> oh, it's chilly. Um, whether it be, you know, me taking a walk and doing a rant about it, or, you know, streaming it live, like a podcast or a vodcast, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Uh, but if you guys are interested in that, like, give me some topics. Well, obviously you have to let me know in the comments. And then give me some topics to talk about. Uh, nothing, nothing too edgy, I guess. Something... Uh, I mean, I'll talk about anything except for, like, you know, things that are inappropriate either on Twitch or YouTube, I guess. I don't really care about YouTube. <laughs> like, they can go fuck themselves. They're a bunch of Nazis anyways. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh... Actually, speaking of Nazis, I'm going to talk about... I was thinking about we should talk about the uh, North Korean summit. While I take a little short break here, because it's fucking cold, and the wind is picks up after this corner here. And I want you guys to hear me. So, I'm going to sit down here on this nice little stone little thing. So, uh, yeah. So, my thoughts on the North Korean summit. If you guys aren't familiar with it, North Korea and South Korea have been trying to establish a unification and the end of the world, well, not the world war, the uh, Korean War, for a very long time, um, but 
North Korea isn't very receptive. Hey, buddy. Hey, we're just talking about politics, bud. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, go play. Go play. Yeah, you're good. <coughs> so, um, South Korea has always been receptive to talks for the most part. Um, uh, unfortunately, the last two presidents weren't, uh, South Korean presidents weren't very, um, very receptive because uh, uh, Republicans don't, in Korea at least, aren't very uh, open with North Korea. They feel like North Korea should open up the, themselves to South Korea rather than us trying to initiate the conversation. And by us, I mean South Koreans. <laughs> I'm not South Korean. Well, I guess I am technically South Korean because my parents are both from South Korea, but I was born here, so I'm an American. So uh, even though I am an American, I do have some knowledge of the, uh, the whole uh, situation there. I'm not an expert, obviously, by any means. It's my opinion, and if you don't respect my opinion, you can, you know, it sucks to be you, but <laughs> I don't really care. Um, but, so, the whole thing was like, uh, if you guys aren't familiar with the subject, is North Korea was developing nu nuclear weapons and trying to threaten people, you know, threaten different nations and disrupt the peace or whatever, whatever you want to call it. Basically, they're just trying to get attention. Uh, I'm gonna start walking towards him because I think he wants to walk around and he keeps coming back because he's like losing losing line of sight of me uh, <laughs> uh, Yeah, see that's how you're supposed to play Vermintide too by the way if you guys lose line of sight come back <laughs> Nanix Nanix a well-trained dog <laughs> um, Yeah, so I digress So North Korea we're developing weapons like nuclear weapons warheads and stuff like that and they failed miserably because they blew up one of their test facilities underneath the mountain. I forgot what the mountain was called because I don't have any sources or references on hand at the moment. I'm just taking a fucking walk. Uh, but I'm pretty sure if you do a short Google search, it'll show up. Uh, and my assumption is, at least from what I gathered, is that they failed and they couldn't develop nuclear weapons, at least not to the point where they can refine or enrich uranium or whatever the type of radioactive substance they're using to make nuclear weapons. Uh, to the point where it was stable enough for them to use as a, a directive weapon or something that they can control. Uh, instead, you know, they blew up their facility and probably killing a lot of people <laughs> in the process and destroying all their research and development staff and all their equipment um, that they probably bartered with China to smuggle in for so many years um, for because of, you know, which is now impossible because of all the sanctions and the stresses on the border of and all the import-export uh, stress, like, uh, focus that they're putting on them. The very being, uh, the world pretty much has North Korea under a spyglass, and, um, or magnifying gas, whatever you want to say. Technically spyglass, spy I guess, because they are spying on them. Um, but, so when that failed, they tried to move on to something else, which was um, ballistic, mis mis <sighs> ballistic missiles, like, they're trying to make, um, actually not just ballistic missiles, but, uh, what's it called? I forgot what the, the, the specific term or the, the technical term was, but basically mi missiles that can enter the stratosphere, I think it was, or, uh, the Earth's orbit, essentially, and, uh, basically be able to target anywhere in the world. Um, and that's a very complicated, like, I'm, I'm obviously not a rocket scientist, and that does take rocket science, you know? Um, but that's a pretty big achievement that they tried to go for. I think it was a much safer option versus the nuclear weapons. Um, but it, it also put an emphasis on this, the threat, because once they, once they started firing missiles off over Japan, over the Sea of Japan, people started freaking out, which, they, I mean, it's, it's kind of understanding, but it's like a child having a tantrum, you know, and you negotiate with a child with a tantrum. Um, saying, hey, if you, if you keep acting out, we're going to go home, right? Um, but the fact that, that, you know, there's an empty threat there behind North Korea, it was basically a win-win because they didn't, they failed at nuclear weapons. They technically failed at ballistic missiles too, or like, in, what are the, whatever it's called, those, mil those missiles that go into space and then come back into the Earth's atmosphere and, um, target, um, you know, different countries and all that from halfway across the world. And by them failing to do that, 
all that, they still gain something on the negotiating table, which was basically their trump card, right? It's basically when, like in poker, if someone goes, like, starts to aggressively raise uh, and, you know, act like, a, like, not necessarily aggressively, but... Um, in this, in Kim Jong Un's state, he did aggressively do it, which was kind of funny because the world, the world is basically uh, a bunch of bad poker players, right? They're not professionals; they're all retarded. They have no idea how to play poker. They don't know when someone's making, you know, uh, push or whatever. They're just just kind of faking it out. They don't have that kind of feeling, and everyone gets super tense when someone raises the pot. You know, it's, it's stupid. And Kim Jong Un basically raised the pot with fake chips, and went all in with these chips that aren't even real. And the world bought it up and ate it up and lapped it up and said, "You know what? We are gonna muck my hand." Um, and I'll tell you what: we can split the pot evenly. You know, even if if I just if we all muck together, if we all you know fold, then. Uh, you know, we get to split the pot. That's essentially what North Korea did. They, they didn't use real chips, and they get get some something out of it, which was negotiating rights. That and also lifts. They're gonna try to lift sanctions off of North Korea because they're quote unquote disarming their nuclear weapons uh, uh, research, right? So, which was already failing in the first place. So, it's a win-win. Not only that, but regardless of weapons and military strategy or whatever development of weapons. Um, what they what they're planning to do is make Kim Jong Un seem like a very rational person, which he wants to negotiate with the citizens of North Korea um, because he wants to act like he's doing this for the better of the country, but he's not. Uh, he's got nothing to lose at this point, and him doing this is just you know essentially getting the people's vote. Well, not necessarily the vote, because they don't vote in North Korea. Um, but, you know what I'm saying. The support and raising morale. And that's really important when your country's really desperate. Um, so, by giving North Korean citizens this illusion of choice, right? Uh, he's succeeding in raising the morale and his backers and his, you know, the loyalists and things like that. Uh, also, it brings up people outside of the country to shed light onto him a little bit better. Now he doesn't look so crazy. But he is crazy. He's a mass murderer, you know. So is his whole family. And things aren't going to change. He's doing, he's doing this just for the... Uh, to make... to, to solidify his uh, dictatorship. And not just him. His family's dictatorship. I mean, let's be real here. This guy fucking murdered so many people and oh let me speaking of which you know how like north korean defectors were uh initially really scared to leave the country right to defect i mean it's still very scary and there's still huge risk you are literally risking everything to do so um and i have a lot of respect for them to do that but there's also this power that the defectors gained by uh sharing their stories, you know, like, I think the first one I saw in, like, modern times was on TED Talks on YouTube, and that got me into the whole, like, interest of learning about North Korea, their situation, all that, and I had a few people that I know that went to North Korea um, to help, like, kind of like a mission aid to help the people of North Korea, and... It was pretty trippy what they told me. <laughs> um, they was like they started spewing fucking propaganda on the airplane there. Like as soon as you get on the airplane ride, it, it's just all like propaganda and shit. <laughs> it's crazy. It's, they're totally brainwashed. But yeah, this is a long rant. Sorry guys, it's a political discussion. It's gonna get long. But anyways, so the power of the defectors started to uh, rise, right? Because of their their them sharing their stories and the internet being a thing and you know, word of mouth and all that shit, and that's good, but at the same time, the defectors always said the same thing, we want unification, we want peace, we want to reunite with our southern brothers and sisters, you know, all that bullshit, right, which is great and all, I, I, I respect that, and I understand that, because they're very innocent people, right, um, because citizens don't, they don't have any power, so they're not very, um, 
they only know North Korea. They don't understand the dynamics within the politics of within certain scenarios of like what's there to gain, what's there to lose, right? And uh, it would be nice if there would be unification, but I don't think there ever will be. I'm, I'm, maybe I'm being pessimistic, but I'm, I'd like to say that's realistic because in order for them, South and North Korea, to be unified, um, Kim Jong Un would have to step down. He would completely have to, you know, give up all power, or maybe even die. And he doesn't want to die, uh, so I doubt. It. So with the whole like kind of show they did with the Olympics, you know, in South Korea, and how they acted, they're, they're already shedding propaganda there, you know, like, oh, and I remember, like, I was disgusted in the American media when they were saying, like, oh, look at how um, North Koreans, Kim Jong-un's sister is looking at, uh, at Trump, or what's it called, was it a Trump and Melania? No, it wasn't Trump and Melania, they didn't go, did they? I'm trying to remember. I mean, it might be Pence. I don't remember. Yeah, I think it was Vice, uh, Vice President uh, Mike Pence, but yeah, it was pretty fucking stupid. Like, North Korean propaganda is so stupid, like, even just because you're a fucking Democrat doesn't mean that you have to hate on and, like, side with a fucking dictator. That's so stupid, you know? It's like, use your fucking common sense. Kim Jong-un's a mass murderer, so is his whole family, and everyone that's keeping him power, they all deserve to, you know, run fucking whatever, like, in a cell or be tortured to death. They're fucking terrible people. <sighs> Anyways, I digress. Um, come on, buddy. Let's go. But, yeah, so this is, this this entire thing is a ploy just to to gain some sort of, like, trust or seem sane to a degree. Um, but the, 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 he's only been interested in one thing. His whole family's only been interested in one thing. Uh, is retaining power and re retaining the uh, dictatorship, so... Yeah, he uses uh, North Korean citizens as pawns, and you can like literally like resources, right? So he doesn't give any respect to their lives or their choices or their free will, and that's what happens. Your country gets so desperate, and they start to leave, and then their voices get heard from other you know countries and other people that are more sympathetic or to their um, situation, and. Once they gain a voice and gain power, um, that power is siphoned from the dictator. Um, no matter, I think the most chilling statement that I heard from a North Korean um, defector was, um, Kim Jong-un can't kill us all, otherwise he wouldn't have anyone to rule over. And that's roughly translated, but... <laughs> That, that was really chilling. I was like, damn, that's, that's so brave and also very disheartening because it has to come down to that, <laughs> that kind of logic. But in North Korea, that's, that's a very sound logic because they don't care. Like, people die all the time on the streets and shit. Like, little kids, little children, they fucking die from starvation, like, laying on this fucking road and, you know, you see their bodies get picked up by, like, those, uh, what are they called, the minders? I don't know what those people are called, but... They basically keep everything in order and report things to the government. <laughs> it's terrible. But yeah. Anyways, I think that maybe in the future, um, so if they do, quote unquote, uh, disarm themselves, I don't trust this thing. This thing looks really fucking moldy. It doesn't feel solid, it feels kind of wet. If that makes any sense. But, anyways, um, I think in the future, North Korea is going to become secluded again. So what they're going to do is try to lift the sanctions. And once those sanctions are lifted, they get what they want. They bail out uh, and they return to their their shell, you know. Um, and if they people start implementing sanctions again, they're going to continue their nuclear weapons, quote unquote, <laughs> uh, development and ballistic missiles testing. And it's the same shit. Or maybe they'll find out some other way. Maybe they'll, they'll fucking develop some sort of chemical weapon or something. I don't know, like nerve gas or some shit. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but yeah, that's my whole like idea of what's going on there. At least from my perspective, from what I know.
but this is kind of a long rant, so I'm gonna end it here. It's been like 20 minutes or so, 21 minutes, yeah. Anyways, guys, if you have any ideas or discussions or rants that I can, that you guys want to go over, uh, leave a comment below, and I'll maybe stream it or do a podcast or something. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Uh, I actually ran out of uh, memory on my phone so I it stopped recording and I lost the rest of the footage it wasn't much anyways the rest of it was just me ranting about uh, what I wanted to do with uh, the footage and all that stuff but yeah uh, if you guys liked the rant and if you guys stuck around this far uh, let me know if you guys want to hear about certain subjects or possibly something that might interest you guys uh, in terms of uh, me discussing it or probably I might even do it in a more professional setting by professional I mean probably at home um, because there's just too much wind on these walks and it's uh, really hard to stabilize a phone so it looks really jittery and it's it's probably nauseating to some of you guys so um, if you guys want me to do something similar to a podcast or something like that let me know uh, in the uh, comment section below uh, anyways, guys, thanks uh, for watching and tuning in. Um, I will stream more regularly as much as I can. Uh, and thanks for watching. Peace.